I bought myself a chess set off eBay. Uh, nothing particularly unusual there, but this one cost me £200-ish, maybe a little bit more. And uh, the other thing is I'm not particularly brilliant at chess. I think the last time I played was 20 years ago and I seem to remember being rubbish. But um, it fulfills a childhood ambition, this, because I always imagined that there'd be a chess set where you could move your pieces and then the other side would move its pieces automatically. So you'd be playing against the computer. Now, of course, there were loads of computer chess sets around when I was a kid that had like a digital display which would tell you what the opponent's moves were or there'd be LEDs that light up or something like that. But you'd always be doing all the work, your side and the other side. Whereas in my head, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if you had a chess set where the pieces like magically moved across the board with like magnets underneath or something. Well, apparently these things existed. I wasn't aware that they ever existed. Um, but uh, when I saw an advert for this one on a gadget blog, I watched the video and I thought, wow, that's that thing I always wanted. I have to get one of those. And then I saw the price. And so I thought, oh, that's a little bit too much. Went looking on eBay and a chap was selling one that he'd used a couple of times, which doesn't bode particularly well, but it was, I say, less than half price. So that's, this is the one I've got. Now, it's not the one that I wanted. There were two different ones of these. There's a larger one and a smaller one. I've got the larger one and you'll see what I mean. Hold on, let me try and lift this up. Heavy as well. Yeah, now I'm hoping quite a bit of this packaging is packaging and the board takes up a lot less space because if not, this is a gigantic chess board. Um, I've got a couple of questions about this though. Uh, one thing with this, this square off the world smartest chess board, the idea is you can play against the board, but you can also play against people around the world by connecting this up with an app on your phone. Now, anytime anything mentions an app on a phone, I get a little bit worried that what would happen if that server behind there or the app gets discontinued? Are you left with something that just doesn't work? work. So I'm intrigued as to whether or not I can just play against this without having to connect up with the app or do I have to rely on the app, in which case it's uh, perhaps not as good an idea. I've had so many things over the years that I've bought that are now non-functional because the companies have closed down. So I mean, of course, you could still play a game of chess on the board as you could with any uh, chess board, but you know, you can buy a chess board for like £10 or something. So uh, anyway, we'll have a look at that and we'll have a look if it really does take up all this box and um, Hopefully I'll uh, have a game of chess against the computer and get soundly beaten as well if this thing works. So let's get out of the box and uh, have a good look at it. Now, of course, I'm more than a little bit late to this party because this was a product that was successfully funded on Kickstarter all the way back in 2016. Since then, it's gone on to become available through the manufacturer's own website, as well as through stores like Amazon. But all that passed me by because I wasn't actively searching for a chess set at the time. So there we go. Now, let me just pop that down there. Okay, quick get start guide. Don't know if it's iOS and Android. Oh, yeah, there we are. Google Play and App Store. So, iOS or Android. Are these uh, wood? Yeah, I think they're carved out of wood, though. It's nice, isn't it? Right, so I've got my adapter for my adapter. This is a 12.6 volts, 2 amp power supply. I'm going to plug it in because I've got no idea how much charge is in here. I think it does 30 games on one charge, the smaller one which doesn't have the side parts on. I think that does 15 games on one charge which is, seems plenty to me. So we'll just plug that in there. This is the uh, the power socket on the side here. Got a, uh, a button on the front and that tells me that this thing does need the app because we've only got the one button on here there's no other buttons to say start game stop game any of that business it's all reliant on the the app which is a bit unfortunate i wish it had a standalone mode it just required a few more buttons on the device itself you've got to connect up to it via bluetooth and uh, of course i've got to download the app as well and that's pretty much all it says on these instructions no doubt the rest of it will talk me through it the board itself it looks like it's made out of wood they've done a good job with that actually it looks looks nice it isn't it's plastic though um but yeah no complaints there uh, that probably wouldn't work if it was wood would it would it because you'd have to <laughs> would would it you'd have to uh get the device to move the pieces through the wood i suppose a thin piece of plastic would work better talking about the pieces moving they've all got a little bit of um felt type stuff on the bottom now initially in my head i was imagining this would use like rfid or something it would know what all the pieces were and where they were because it's going to be a lot less 
clever than that. I mean, why, why make it overcomplicated? You're going to start with your pieces on the spaces where they're designated to be. And then what it's going to do, it's just going to move them from there. So it knows if it, if it moves uh, this one, it goes, right, well, that's the queen. So it can move that over there. Then it just remembers where the queen is, what space it's on. It doesn't have to uh, know that that's the queen. I, so if I was to sort of pick it up and put it somewhere else, it would no doubt get confused. Um, well, talking of which, you have to sort of push the piece down, apparently, on the spot to say that that's the one you've picked and then move it somewhere else and push it down to say that's where you've put it to. Now, there's no click. There's no, it doesn't feel like there's anything there. There's kind of a bit of a, feels like there's a membrane perhaps underneath there, but it isn't a, it is like a clicky thing. I downloaded the app, haven't started it yet. It says switch the board on first, so let's do that. Ah. Right, now I can hear some whirring noises inside. That's quite interesting. And that's it. It's, it's gone quiet. Right, so we've got play with square off, play with friends. I don't have any friends. Um, stream games. So you can watch games that are happening, apparently. We'll get into that in a minute. Let's try pl just playing a game. And game sounds on, which are, it beeps, apparently. If you um, make a, a an illegal move, it'll beep a couple of times just to let you know you can't do that. You could turn that sound off if you know what you're doing. Uh, level one. That sounds good enough for me. Let's give it a go. Play game. Um, okay, so let me start off. And uh, we'll go from there to there. Ah, there we go. It's, it's, it's quite magical, really. Um, let's just do something daft. Ah, oh, yes, you've uh, opened with the Fibonacci sequence. Ooh, only the Grandmasters know that one. Yeah, okay. Um, let's just be a bit bizarre with our moves here. It's quite good that it's got the beep sound on because you know when you've pushed something hard enough for it to... What's it doing? Oh, no. Oh, that'll be that... That bishop's killed it, hasn't it? Yeah, this is this is why uh, I need to practice a bit. There we go. Right, so it took the piece off the board, as you saw then. I think you can see. And um, it's replaced it with its bishop. Right, tell you what, we'll bring the camera over the top so you can have a look in a, in a bit better detail. And on this app, I'm going to just record the screen here because uh, you can see the board i think live on the app as well let's just try that oh yeah there we are it's, it kind of looks old-fashioned as well it's quite good how they've done it uh there used to be chess on the television uh and they used a board that looked just like this one um maybe there's just a standard board but it just takes me back that okay we'll bring the camera in a bit hmm. it's like a game of chess this isn't it When you see your own pieces moving, you're thinking, oh, what's it doing there? But obviously it was taking me um, a night out of the equation. Is that check? It is, isn't it, I think. It didn't tell me it was, but... Oh, no. Well, this is this is appalling already. What's wrong with that move? I, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something here. This, in it, it's check. Oh, what a clown. It'd be nice if the app sort of says, oi, you, you can't do that, and it explains why, but I suppose that's just me just being a fool. So if we do that instead, that does the job, doesn't it? You see, I'm learning. You see, that's what's good about this, because uh, it's so long since I played. I wouldn't exactly say I'm rusty. I'm kind of uh, what's, whatever the level below rust is. 
what you're witnessing here is an absolute masterclass in how not to play chess. I've got to be honest, though, I'm, I'm having fun because it's just, it's like being slapped by a computer for being stupid. Then you kind of, <laughs> I've only got myself to blame. Uh, but I, it's, it's amusing to me how absolutely terrible I am at this. But um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really good, this. It's really enjoyable. Um, obviously you could play computer-based chess a lot cheaper than this but uh, this is this is fulfilling a childhood dream this uh, i just remember chess on t television and things when i was a kid it, it's um it's funny i mean it, it's only the 1980s this i'm talking about but there were programs on television on how to play chess there were chess tournaments on tv and i wasn't imagining this i, I mentioned it to the missus the other day i said do you remember chess being on television a lot when you were a kid? And she's like, yeah, yeah, it was. It was always on television. You don't really tend to see it nowadays. But also, I remember a lot of computers playing chess. It was like a big deal. Oh, this computer can play chess. It was always a thing. I mean, you used to get like a, I don't know if you can still get them, but like battle chess and things. And uh, is it Sargon or something? Somebody like that. Anyway, um, the, the, various at the beginning of the thing, there's an Apple II playing chess. It was kind of a, like a cultural thing. It was a shortcut for... for um, uh, screenwriters, I think, just to show someone was intelligent. You'd, you'd have a scene that, that kind of went like this. Oh, there you are, McMullet. So glad you could join us. Playing a game on your own there, blowhard? What is it, checkers? It's the game of kings, chess. I've been playing this particular game against a grandmaster in India for 10 years now. He sends me his moves once a month by telegram, and it's just starting to get interesting. Do you play? Yeah, my mum taught me. The, uh, the little horses, they, they move diagonally, right? Well then, come, sit down, we'll start a new match. And, just to make it interesting, if you lose, I'll feed you to the crocodiles. OK, but make it snappy, I've got a restaurant reservation at eight. The Sicilian defence. Most intriguing. And I think you'll find that that is checkmate. Just put it down to beginner's luck. But that's a far cry away from what's going on here. This is like uh, a total annihilation, a humiliation. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, what do I do now? Uh, you can't go backwards with pawns, can you? I'm, uh, <laughs> I think I need to read some books. I'm going to take my first piece here. Yes, and it let me do it. So I can put that over there. Oh, what's going on there? It's took, took another one. Look at this. This is embarrassing. That's the piece that I've took. And it's, all, <laughs> it's filled up this side here. I've moved everything out to try and get it to sort of play an, an interesting game. If it was a really cagey game. This, this, this is me <laughs> covering up there. But no, if it was like a cagey game, it was like, oh, Let's think about this for an hour. I wanted stuff to happen, so that's what's happening. But uh, I was hoping I'd be doing a bit more of this stuff. Right, so clearly I could benefit from a bit of practice. And one way maybe to do that would be to have a look at some games being streamed. Now, I'm guessing that they'll show all the moves in live action. I don't know if you sort of join it in the middle. I don't know, that won't make any sense, would it? I'm sure it'll start from the beginning. So let's find a live game. Um, stream now. Right, so let's see what happens here. Right, looking at the app now, it says it's thinking. I'm guessing those are the people playing live now in these positions and uh, goodness knows how long they could be thinking for. So. Let's reset. Uh, if we press this, do you want to close the game? Yes. And then reset the game. Should put everything back into the original positions. Please wait. First time I've tried to do this. So let's see if it works. It says resetting at the bottom there. There we go. It's moving off now.
if you decide to buy one of these, it's important to pick the appropriate size board. And it's not just about the size of it, there are more features on the large table. One of which you've just seen, that's the auto reset. The only way it can do this is because the large board has parking positions at either side for the pieces that have been taken out of the game. So because it always knows where all the pieces are, even when they're no longer on the board, it's able to move them back into their appropriate positions. On the small board, the pieces, when they're taken out of the game, are just moved off to the side in the centre. And it's up to you to move them from there to prevent them all from bunching up. The large board also plays twice the number of games on one charge, but perhaps of more importance to more people is the large one is the only model that can display the live streamed games. Despite all that, I'd still have just gone for the small board, purely because of the amount of space it takes up. I'm not really all that interested in streaming games from other people. I can manually reset the position of the pieces by hand in a fraction of the time the board takes to do it automatically. And the large one is just really large. Neither of these have space in them to put the pieces inside. There's no drawer and they don't fold away or anything like that. So you're going to want to leave these things set up and out somewhere in your house on a table. So just make sure you've got enough space for one. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Square Off is not the first chess set that can automatically move its pieces. In fact, they go all the way back in the 1980s. You could have got the MB Grandmaster that did this. I believe that one was rebranded over the years as the Fidelity Phantom and the Mephisto Phantom. And people are always at pains to point this out in any video demonstrations I've seen on YouTube of the Square Off. They're straight in the comments there with, oh, you could get these before. This is nothing new, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you could get them in the past, but unless you've got a time machine, you're going to have difficulty getting one of those now. If you want one now, you're going to be buying the square off and besides which any video demonstrations i've seen of those older ones they're horrendously noisy this one you can hear it but it's not an annoying sound it just sounds like something that's functioning it doesn't sound like something that's grinding away inside so yeah i have no issues with the sound that this makes now one benefit this has over those old ones is of course this app now i mentioned i'd rather have an option where the device could just function on its own it didn't need the app but it does need the app and there's nothing I can do about that. But one benefit to having it connected and on the internet and things is that you can play a game against somebody else in another location who has got one of these tables. So they could be in their house and their piece would move and then you go move your piece and I think you can like resume games and things like obviously don't have somebody to play against like that but also they could just use the app they could be using the app on their phone and it would move the pieces just the same so those are also added functionalities and as we saw you can stream games from other places and i've got to say that like most kind of club type communities where people become experts in a certain um subject chess does seem to be one of those ones that seems a bit exclusive at times where everyone is an expert oh you're just using the something opening or you should you know it kind of you, you you can't just wander in and just have a go you i remember as a kid it was like you had a chess club at school at lunchtime and after school and stuff and I, but as an adult like a you know middle-aged person i think trying to wander in and try and take up chess anywhere would be difficult so yeah chess computers are, are suitable for that so i i, I think it's, it's good that you could play chess in your own house against a computer with real pieces and you've got a nice thing that looks decent on a table as well rather than just an app on your phone and things but yeah it's expensive not ideal for everyone the only issue is i just don't know where i'm going to put it because it is a little bit too large for my house but I uh, hope you've enjoyed having a look at it here today. I'll put a couple of links in the video description text box to this Square Off Company's website. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.